I don't even know if this is a word, but you are unruinable. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I want to talk to you guys about the parable of the lost coin. Now, a parable is just a story with a purpose, and this this parable that Jesus told is in the middle of three parables in the book of Luke that are all talking about repentance. They're all talking about people that other people would look down on. In the last episode, I talked about the parable of the lost sheep, and the next time I'll talk about the parable of the prodigal son. But today I'm talking about the parable of the lost coin. And the the thing that's really cool about the Bible and and Jesus' words and, and his parables is that there's so, so much that we can learn from them. And one of the things that we can learn from these three parables is how to get a proper perspective of ourselves and of other people, to start looking at ourselves and at others in the way that God looks at us. In the parable of the lost coin, Jesus said, suppose a woman had 10 silver coins. Now, these silver coins were like worth a day's wages. So if a person who had a a good job worked all day long, they'd get one silver coin. So imagine that a woman had 10 silver coins. That's kind of a lot of money. Suppose she had 10 coins and she loses one of them. Wouldn't she light a candle and, you know, sweep the house, look everywhere, you know, pretty much turn the house upside down looking for that coin? Of course she would. And when she found that coin, she would rejoice. She'd celebrate. She would, you know, tell all her friends. She'd say, I I lost this coin, but I found it. Celebrate with me. And Jesus said, in the same way, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God when one sinner repents. Now, again, to repent means to, to stop doing the bad thing you're doing and do what is right. It means to come back to God. One of the reasons why I like this parable is because I think a coin is a really good illustration and and obviously it's a good illustration because Jesus used it but but a coin is valuable no matter where it is you know if you've got nine coins in a special you know treasure chest those nine coins are going to be the same value of a similar coin that's on the ground in the dust somewhere like have you ever had have you ever had like a crisp new dollar bill like one that just came from the bank I've had like two in my whole life and, and they're beautiful. They're so cool. They don't have any creases in them. And they, they have like a whole different kind of smell. Like it's really cool when you get one of these brand new dollars. But the thing is that, that brand new dollar is worth just as much as the dollar that's been, you know, in my pocket or like in my shoe, you know, like it's, it's all the same. It might not seem that way to you or me, but, but it is. And it's the same with people. Like, we have a really, really bad tendency to, like, assign value to people. We'd say, this person is a good person, this person is a bad person, and good people matter and bad people don't. And we think this about other people, but we also think this about ourselves, too. Like, like when we mess up, we have a tendency to think, I'm ruined. God hates me. I've done this bad thing that God says not to do, and so now I'm done. I'm worthless, but you're not. It doesn't matter what you've done. You're valuable to God. You're important to God. And if other people tell you that you're worthless and you tell yourself that you're worthless, it doesn't matter. It's none of your business what other people say about you. And you know what? It's none of your business what you say about you either. God decides your value and you're valuable. Very. You know, if you sin, and I I really should say when you sin because we all do. When you do what you should not do, It's like you're the lost coin. You're not, you know, where you should be. But you know, in this parable, when the woman loses a silver coin, she doesn't go, oh man, I hate that coin. I hope I never see it again. Better not show its face around here or I'm just gonna smash it. No, that's not what she does at all. She goes looking for it. She wants it. It's hers. And it's the same with you and God. When you wander away, God isn't saying, oh man, I hate that guy. I hope I never see his face again. No, he's like looking for you. He wants you to come back. And unlike a coin, you you have a choice to come back. And he wants you to come back. Not so that he can stomp on you, but because he loves you and he wants you. So my challenge to you guys today is that you would not look down on other people. You wouldn't look down on people who are not doing what they should be doing. My challenge is that you would not look at sinners and say, God hates you, and so do I. Because he doesn't, and you shouldn't. I'm not saying it's fine to sin. It's wrong to sin. You don't want to be that lost coin. The other part of the challenge is that if you are that lost coin, if you have wandered away from God, if you are doing something that you oughtn't be doing, my challenge is that you would come back to God. You'd repent. Your sin does not make you less valuable to God. 
your sin has not ruined you for God. Our sin brings ruin, right? Sin brings death. Lots and lots of bad stuff comes from sin. And your sin might ruin a lot. Sin really can ruin many, many things. But it can't make you less valuable to your Father God. It can't make God hate you. He will love you no matter what. And he will always go looking for the lost coin. Hey guys, I hope you like this video. And yeah, man, I, I feel like I run into this a lot where people will say that, that they've messed up so bad that God can never love them. But, but that's never, never possible, right? You are unruinable. You cannot be ruined, at least not in that way, right? There's nothing that you can do that, that ruins you for God. Where he says, I used to like that guy and now I hate that guy. And he's never like, oh, I used to think that girl was special, but now the only thing that makes her special is that I hate her and I never want to see her again. No, that's, that's not possible. God loves you so much, and there's nothing that can separate you from the love of your Father God. So if you've wandered away from God, stop wandering and go back. He's looking for you. He wants you, and he loves you forever.